Hello everyone, this is Charlie Wallers with Wallers Photography and today we're doing the video number three of these beverage photography series. Today we're going to learn how to photograph a beverage with the natural bokeh in the background or bokeh in the background, however you want to pronounce that word. For the last two videos, I've been using the Canon M6 Mark II and the main reason is because I want to show that gear is not really that important. But on today's video, we need good bokeh. So for that, the gear is important. So I'm going to be shooting with the Canon 5D Mark IV and the 70-200 to 200, uh, 2.8 lens. Boka is a Japanese word that means out of focus. When you look at a professional image and you see that soft the background that's out of focus and when you got lights you see those balls of light that just glow in the background that's what boka is. And I've heard it pronounced boke, boka, however you want to say it. It doesn't matter to me as long as we know what we're talking about. To obtain this effect you need a longer lens at least a 50 millimeter and a very wide aperture, like a 1.4 or a 2.8 with a long lens. So that's why I'm using the 70 to 200. It's a 2.8 all the way through, and that's really, really gonna help get those bokeh balls in the background. This little camera, I have the kit lens, and it's an 18 to 45. 45 millimeter is enough to get those bokeh balls, but it's a 5.6 lens. So it's not wide enough. I'm gonna show you a couple of images side by side from each camera to see if you can tell the difference. One more thing. To get good defined bokeh, you need to be pretty far away from your background. Your subject needs to be far away from your background. On this tabletop studio, I don't have a lot of room. <laughs> so I'm gonna come up with a couple ideas here and see how the best way to do this. Uh, let me start trial and error like I usually do and I learn a lot as I go. So let me set up my lights and go from there. The best way to, for me, the best way to appreciate this background is to shoot on a darker background and then you have those highlights. Uh, if everything is bright, you're going to see something out of focus, but it's not going to be as appreciated as if you're shooting a dark drink. So this set is very similar to what we used before for the dark. Uh, I added these LED string lights because that's what I'm going to use for bokeh right now. There's a couple of different ways, but this is the first one I'm going to show you. Um, having that, this is maybe three feet away from my, from my glass, so that should be enough to get a good out of focus uh, glow in the background. I've moved the lights a little bit. I have one in the, in the back as before, one back here, and I have another one here to the side front. The camera has to be at the largest possible aperture, which in this lens is 2.8. So I need to get a shutter speed where it's not going to blur. Uh, so 1 60th, 200 is the max sync of the, of the flashes. So I can't go above 200, but I need to find a shutter speed and an ISO to pick up these lights. So the challenge is matching the, the strobes or the speed lights to that same uh, aperture <laughs> and shutter speed. So I've set them to the lowest possible setting. I think they're at uh, 30, uh, 1 32nd of their power. So that should be enough to light up the beverage and the camera can pick up those out of focus blurs in the background. You can see it right here, the closer I get, the closer I get to the lens, the more blur you get in the background. And that's exactly what's happening. This is a 2.8 lens and that's what I want to do with the with the other, with the 70 to 200, which is also a 2.8. But the more distance there is between you and the subject, the more of that out of focus you're gonna get. And that's, that's what we're going for. There's something else that I just encountered uh, when doing a couple of test shots. Because I'm shooting at 
my video lights are interfering uh, with the shoot. On the very first video I made, I talked about using your live view function on your camera and doing the exposure simulation. So if you do this, you can see what if there's any other light affecting what you're gonna take a picture of. Right now, if I use the exposure simulation, it shows me everything. So every other light that's in here is affecting the final product. I don't want that. So I need to start shutting lights off because I need to use that 2.8. If I didn't use a wide enough aperture, I'm not gonna get that, that blur in the back. Keep using that exposure simulation, at least just so you can figure out your settings. Once you're done with that, then you can get rid of that. But for now, let's try to uh, reset everything and, and find out what light is interfering and what light isn't. So shooting like this uh, has its own set of challenges. And that's because when, you, when you're doing a, a shallow depth of field and shooting at 2.8 or a very large aperture, ambient light interferes with your image. So you need to keep the ambient light as dim as possible, but your camera still needs to focus. So it needs light to be able to focus. <laughs> so what I recommend, if you have a tripod, set your camera on a tripod, set your product, get the focus, shut the lights off, and just shoot at that distance. Don't move your camera back and forth. But as I said, there's a second way to get this bokeh effect. So let me, let me set it up and I'll show you the, the other way that you can do this. So this setup is a little bit easier to work with because you can get a lot more separation. The problem, the only issue here is finding a long enough service that's about the same height. So right here, I'm in a kitchen. I got my drink here on this counter and on this stove in the background, I placed a black uh, foam board and I stacked glasses. So I have quite a few glasses that I found around the house that I stacked in the background. And I took the diffuser away from one of the flashes and aimed it directly at the glasses. So the other two lights are in charge of making the drink look good. But for now, I have that not diffused light in the background at low power and these other here also at low power but that gives me a lot more distance between between the subject and the background which gives me a much much better uh, bokeh so let's let's take a few shots and I'll show you what it looks like Just as in all the previous videos, lighting is key. You want to dial that light in first, but more than anything, your gear does matter when you're trying to get that soft background. On these side-to-side -side images, the, the small camera, the, the shorter lens just did not give you that soft bokeh. It just, it, just can't, it just can't physically do it, and that's when limitations come in. I know some of these telephoto lenses and 2.8 lenses get really expensive but it's the only way to get some of these effects. Or is it? There's one more way that you can get these effects and that's by shooting these objects, these glasses on purpose out of focus. So take your little camera, focus as close as you can to nothing on manual focus and then take that picture. Then we take that image into Photoshop as a layer and change the luminosity and that's gonna blend with your isolated on black drink you're gonna blend it and you might have to mask out a little bit here and there, but that's gonna blend it and give you that same effect. So there's always ways around not having the appropriate gear. It's just, uh, what, I recommend getting it right on camera, but it can be very expensive. So if, if you don't have the finances and you don't have the gear, there's another way around it. You do need to have a software editor or like Photoshop or I use Affinity, Affinity Pro, and it works just as well as Photoshop does without the descriptions. Um, so it does a great job, it's just not getting it on camera, but you could still 
get those images. So don't forget, there's always options. And with this, we conclude video three of this photography tutorial of how to take pictures of cocktails. Uh, the next, I'm gonna, next video is going to be about splashes, and we're going to take into account everything we've learned in the previous videos, how to set your cocktail, how to light up your cocktail, how to light up the background. That's for later. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, please click the like button. Please subscribe if you haven't. It really, really does help me out a lot. And we'll see you next time. Cheers.